Well, it is time for the USFL to finally debut. It's been a long time coming, and ever since last year when the USFL was announced, we patiently awaiting, you know, what in the world is going to happen? What what kind of what kind of what kind of product are we going to get? We're, we're going to get something. We're going to get something real interesting, I think, this weekend and. Easter weekend is going to be real fun and going to be a real interesting time. I'll let me tell you that much. Um, of course, you know, we got all the announcers lined up. The mascots are ready. The previews are ready. So why don't we, why don't we get all up into it? Uh, we, got to talk, we got to talk about who's going to be calling the games first. Um, I think that's a big thing, you know. Um, now, for NBC, this is... One of these names is surprising to me for a very specific reason, and you all and you all should know why. Um, if you're a Cowboys fan, you know a Dallas Cowboys fan. We'll get to that in a moment. But Jack Collingsworth, the son of Chris, uh, he's going to be NBC's lead play-by-play guy with Paul Burmeister behind him. Yeah, Paul's an excellent. Um, I've seen him do lacrosse. I've seen him do some college games like back in like 2010 or something like that, like 2012 or something like that. Like, like these guys are pretty good. But the analysts, uh, aside from one name, are, you know, the analysts, the sideline guys, the pregame people, you know, all uh, the rest of these people are pretty unknown to me. Like, you have Jason Garrett. Yes, that Jason Garrett. Yeah, that guy. As one of the analysts with Michael Robinson and Cameron Jordan backing him up, you know, also as analysts as well. And then, you know, the sidelines, the pregame, postgame coverage people are completely unknown to me. Like, I have no idea who Zora Stevenson or Corey Robinson or Sarah Perlman are. I have no idea who these people are, but they're there. Hopefully, they do a good job because, you know, again, like, yeah, this is. You know, this is going to be something, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, well, this is just filler for NBC. This is just, like, time filler, and I, I can I can see where you're coming from. But, uh, you know, you know, NBC, they, ha- they have a big stake in this as well. You know, they got to put off a good product, and, you know, if everything goes well for them, then, I mean, hey, kudos to them. And then, of course, you know, Fox, we know, we know um, already, I think we talked about this, what, last week or the week before last, that Kurt Menefee and Joel Klatt are the Fox guys, they, they're the, they leading the way on Fox. Kevin Kugler, Brock Heward, and Mark Sanchez are also going to be on Fox's coverage. Um, Heward's just going to be like a sideline guy for like some of the games. It'll be Kugler and Sanchez, so basically, you know... A, a low tier NFL crew because the because Kugler and Sanchez are like, like, like I think they were like the number four or five um, Fox NFL team last year. So so I mean that's pretty interesting, you know, for them. You know, of course, you know Joel Klatt is the top college football guy, and then Menifee's been in the uh, the studio for God knows how long. And then these two were together for the XFL last season, you know. So and. Quick note on the USFL mascots. They're unsettling to me. Uh, I, I can't. I, I, I don't like them. I don't like any of them. I'm sorry. They all look unsettling. They all creep me out. And I, I, I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm good. Take me away. Take me away from this right now. Whew. Disgusting. But anyway, we got to get to the games. And Saturday night... The opener, which will be televised by both NBC and Fox. Of course, NBC's like producing, you know, the game. Fox is doing all the other stuff. Uh, like, they're, they're, like, both, like, both sides are doing like 50 50 on this project here for the opener between New Jersey and Birmingham. Birmingham is favored by three and a half. The over under is 49 and a half. Yes, I'm doing the lines for this game. I know, I'm crazy, right? Um,. But, you know, what's interesting here is that, you know, for the Stallions, for the Birmingham Stallions, they have Alex McGo from FIU. I have no I have never heard of this man in my entire life. Again, a lot of these guys are unfamiliar to me. There's there's some familiar guys here, but the Stallions do not have familiar guys. Uh, Victor Bolton from Oregon State, he's going to be, you know, the big target there. 
And we know the preseason games, you know, were, were rather like a preseason scrimmage or whatever that occurred uh, like last weekend. And it was all right. I could I could only find like a mere so of highlights. And I was just like, well, is there any more? And apparently there was not. So and I forgot who was playing in the, in that um because I know one of them was Michigan. And I forgot who the other team was, but um, the Stallions um they they are a pretty interesting bunch here. Um, hopefully they get it together. Um, of course, you got New Jersey, the other team on this opening Saturday night. Uh, we have the two-time Great Cup champion Mike Riley, you know, and these generals. They have the what one, one place said that you know they have like a plus nine hundred chance to win it all, and another was like, oh well, they're tied with two other teams. But personally, I'm just gonna go with the other. Uh, I'm gonna go with the CBS Sports um, report here, and you know. The Stallions, they have the lowest odds of winning the title, yet they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of guys here. You know, Mike Weber in the backfield, he went to Ohio State. I remember him tearing it up at Ohio State, you know, back in 2017 to 2018. Luis Perez, we all know uh, by now. And then you get, they got a nice set of defensive backs. Devontae Bowsby, Howard Wilson, and Shalom Luwani. Uh, now, there is a QB problem for the Generals. DeAndre Johnson is also a guy that could be starting. And, I again, I don't know much about him at all, but I do remember Luis Perez very well. Uh, you know, from the AAF and XFL, and, you know, probably some NFL, you know, stuff like that. But going to be an interesting one Saturday night. I think, you know, I think we're going to have to take the unders on all these games, And if I'm being honest with you. So, there you go. And then, and then Easter Sunday rolls around with, you know, Houston, the Gamblers, taking on the Michigan Panthers. Michigan is favored by 3.5. The over-under here is 47.5. Shea Patterson, Jeff Fisher going to be a duo, you know, this season for the Panthers. And they have, some, they have some guys with NFL experience. The Panthers have the second best odds to win the title. And for the Gamblers, they have an interesting trio. Um, you know, Clayton Thorson with the Northwestern at quarterback, Dalen Dawkins, who's been on some NFL teams. I've never, I don't think I've heard of it at all. And Isaiah Zubler, or rather Zuber at wide receiver. But again, this is a Kevin Sumlin squad. And I mean, this is Kevin Sumlin we're talking about here. Man's consistently underachieves. I don't know why I said I was a Gamblers fan. When I really have no stakes in any team here, I'm just here for the football. I'm here for the football, similar to how I was with the 2019 IFL season. I'm just here for the football, man. So, uh, so it should be interesting, you know, to start off Easter Sunday, and you know, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real fun. And then the next game up on the triple header slate: Philadelphia and New Orleans. Philadelphia is favored by two and a half. The over under is 46 and a half. The Breakers have a pretty unknown guy by the name of Kyle Sloter. I believe he's had some NFL experience, but he went to Northern Colorado, and Northern Colorado really wasn't it, you know, because, I mean, Northern Colorado has done nothing in the FCS in the past. God knows how long, and I have no idea how long sloter has been on practice squads and stuff like that. But he's got some receivers. He's got some receivers, you know, Sean Poindexter, Johnny Dixon, you know, for the breakers, you know, yeah, anyway, so, I mean, this is gonna, this is gonna be interesting, and then you got David Belaby, you know, anchoring that front seven for the breakers, and so, I mean, you know, just a lot, of, looks like there's a lot more here for New Orleans, in my opinion, and then, you know, you got the Stars, they have a quarterback by the name of Brian Scott, who beat out Zach Mettenberger, in the TSL, he was the guy, you know, he was one of those guys that played the TSL. I don't remember. I remember just looking at, like, the TSL championship and just, like, not even paying attention to it. So, for all intents and purposes, Brian Scott could, you know, could very well be, you know, that guy that's doing pretty, that's, could be doing pretty good. And could be wrong on that front. But, I mean, I, again, there wasn't much there for, for me to talk about about Philadelphia. Then you got Tampa Bay Pitt, uh, 
Tampa Bay Pittsburgh as the nightcap here. Tampa Bay favored by two and a half. The over under forty eight and a half. And you know, I'm, I'm picking the under in all of these. I, I'd pick the under if I were better. Uh, so you know, the Maulers they have and they have a QB battle themselves. Kyle Lawletta and Josh Lubb. Um, well, the Maulers also, you know, also have some interesting, you know, guys, you know, in like the backfield and stuff like that, and, and, and you know, of course, all around the team. But the Bandits, they are the odds on favorites to win the title here in the USFL. With Jordan Tiamu under center, former St. Louis Battlehawk, you got BJ Emmons, Juwan Washington, with being the guys in the backfield. Of course, you got John Franklin the third, you know, as wide receiver, and a lot of people are expecting Tampa Bay to be chucking it all up and down the field, and then Obi Melifonwu, you know, who uh, safety, who is NFL, who has a lot of NFL experience. A lot of these guys on Tampa Bay seem to have a lot of NFL experience. That's why a lot of people are picking Tampa Bay to win the USFL championship this season, and. You know, I, I'm not going to make any, you know, solid, solid predictions here, but I will say take the unders. I will say take the teams that, you know, I, I, I'll go with my picks here and just say, you know, Tampa Bay will win their game. I think New Orleans will win. Uh, Michigan will win their game. And then New Jersey will surprise Birmingham. So, you know, I, I'm just going to go with that and, you know, watch me be completely wrong about that because I mean I know I'm wrong as always. I'm wrong about a lot of things when it comes to predictions, except for the Super Bowl for some reason. But you know, um, take the unders. Do take the point spreads though. You know, like by three and a half, two and a half. Um, most of these games have been like three and a half. You know, to them. You know, I I I, I guarantee you we're gonna have some surprises. Maybe you know these scores get get a little higher. Maybe these scores be a lot lower. It, it really depends on how everything flows. We'll see what it what what it all entails Saturday night. And you know keep you know keep on coming to the channel. I'll, I'll see you all Sunday night. You know to wrap things all up for Week One and everything. And, you know, I can't wait for the USFL to debut Saturday night. And, you know, who's your team? Who are you rocking with? Who are you, are you betting? Are you like, like, what are you, what are you doing? Are you, are you at, are you going to the games? You know, just, just tell me down in the comment section. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell and do all that good stuff. And I'll see you all Sunday. Take care.